Why America doesn't have the third party it wants. Recent Gallup polling shows a record number of Americans identify as independent and favor a new political party. Reading from the column, quote, in any other industry, if half the customers disliked the only two major brands and nearly two thirds of customers desired an alternative, there would be a new product on the shelf yesterday. Joining us now, author of the column, Nick Troiano. He is executive director of Unite America, a group working to bridge the growing partisan divide and foster a more representative and functional government. Nick is a former independent candidate for Congress and opinion contributor for The Hill. Go ahead. So, Nick, thanks so much for being with us. Um, so the question is, what, tr what person who voted for Trump is going to take the chance of voting for an independent candidate? And what, what voter who voted for Biden will take that same chance when they think that all they're doing is hurting their own side and helping get, a, get uh, the other side who they consider to be the enemy elected? Well, that's the problem, Joe, in our system with plurality elections, that the only impact third candidates have is usually to take away votes from one side and help elect the other. And so they fail to get traction. The point is, it doesn't have to be that way. Our current system, which is designed to enable and empower both parties, can be redesigned to empower the voters instead. And that's why it's great that this movement to put voters first, to advance nonpartisan reforms, to fix our electoral system is gaining traction around the country. Because I think the key thing to realize is for the two thirds of people who want a new option, who are dissatisfied with governance and don't feel well represented is that the division and dysfunction that we see every day is a function of good people stuck in a bad system with broken incentives that increasingly push us to the extremes. And so the reforms that we need will not only level the playing field for new competition, but help Democrats and Republicans govern again. If we can't get a third party, let's at least get two that can govern. Michael Steele. So, Nick, it's good to see you, brother. Um, let's, let's wheel that out a little bit further. So what, what kind of reforms are we talking about here? We, when the system is stacked the way to stack, both parties do not want a third force uh, on the playing field. They just don't want that. And, and it's designed to prevent that from happening at the state and county level where a party naturally would form itself. You've got a growing number of Americans who are now saying, I want a third way. I want to look at those options. How does that begin to materialize itself effectively um, pushing up against a system that doesn't want it to begin with? What kind of messaging, organization structure, what should we be looking about, looking at to make something like this a reality? Well, the good news is that the Constitution doesn't prescribe the way that we do elections. It gives the states and Congress that power. And so more states should do what Alaska just did in November when it passed a ballot initiative that did two things. At first, it replaced partisan primaries with a single nonpartisan primary that will advance the top four finishers to the general election, where voters will then have the option to rank their candidates and whoever gets a majority of votes wins. The impact this has is to give voters a lot more power and equal voice in, in the primary, and they can vote for whomever they want in the general election without worrying about splitting the vote. The outcome is not only more competition and participation, but elected leaders who are now incented to put country over party. And we've seen that, for example, with Senator Murkowski, who's up for election next year. When she was among the handful of Republicans who voted to convict President Trump in this last impeachment trial, she knew she wouldn't have to face another closed Republican primary next year, but instead get to make the case to all the voters who represented her as it should be. Now that can be done in all other states, and we've already seen these reforms, nonpartisan primaries, ranked choice voting gain traction in other states. It requires us to put a lot more focus, not just on who we elect, but how we elect, because it's the systems of our elections that determine the behavior of those who we put in office. Casey Hunt, jump in. 
Nick, so I'm following you on some of these changes in terms of, of primaries, and I'm with you in, in the idea that these closed primaries definitely generate uh, a certain closed system. But there have been some problems with some of these new things. The jungle primary system in California, for example, uh, has been pretty unpredictable. In Maine, uh, you know, there Susan Collins ended up winning that Senate race pretty decisively, but there were uh, some questions about how a third party candidate affected actually the will of the voters or could have. Do you have any concerns about this? And is there a specific, is Alaska the model that we go with or is it something else? Well, I think first there's no perfect system. We know the one that we have today is not working well. Both parties are failing the American people and addressing any of the big issues that we care about. They are pandering to the extremes. There's no new competition. As we see, not only is two thirds of Americans want a new choice, half are now politically independent. So this is the time to think boldly about new ways to design our democracy. We've done it before a hundred years ago in the progressive era, we made big changes from at the federal level, at the state level, constitutional amendments. That's what we should be thinking about doing today and use the states as they were designed as laboratories of democracy. Uh, I think that the, the Alaska model is the model. Those two reforms in combination with each other is the solution. And groups like United America and, and our partner organizations are working to scale them across the country. It's going to take more resources, political donors who aren't just investing in fueling the problem of partisanship, but investing in fixing our system of democracy so that we can actually solve the issues that we care about. Nick Troiano, thank you so much for being on. Uh, appreciate your uh, sharing your piece with us.